wizard. The delegate session will now come to order. Can the secretary please call the roll of members? Rachel, can you hear us? She may be having a connection issue, Emerson. Right now, I can see everyone who's on the screen. Okay, awesome. Roll of it. So right now, I see Ponchatoula, Rain, Sanimal, Basil, Lacassine, Central Lafouche, and Florine. Did I miss any? Who's Abby? Abby is a, another leadership delegate. She's observing this one so that she's prepared for her next one. Okay, awesome. All right, I'll mark these down for now. Emerson, if anyone else shows up, we'll register them. All right, so welcome everyone. Today we're going to be voting on, we're making decisions on um, the issue number one, SAE opportunities and licensures. So just a brief overview of what this proposal is. The chapter asks that we propose the state develop a task force to review and suggest actions to be taken to improve and develop new video written con content, conferences and lesson plans for implementing and using SAEs and the AET record keeping system. This would allow for students to be engaged with the SAE portion of the Free Circle model, as well as be able to understand and work through SAEs and the AET record book keeping program. So in a few minutes, we're gonna be sorted into breakout rooms, I think. And from there, we will have discussions, switch breakout rooms and come back in here to discuss as a group. Are there any questions? Awesome. All right, Mr. Lejeune, do you want to wait for a couple more people to come in before we go into breakout rooms? I would go ahead first, Emerson. Go ahead and have a large group discussion on the topic just to see where everyone stands so people can get their ideas out. Okay. And um, after a few minutes, you can get your breakout group started. Okay. So, oh my goodness. With the, using the reactions, at the bottom of your screen, there may be a more button or a reactions button. Just but use it thumbs up feature. How many of us have an SAE? All right, awesome. So I know personally with my SAE, I have had a little trouble with AET and my advisors have also had a little trouble with AET. So someone who put a thumb up, if you would like to talk and maybe say your experience with AET, have you had problems with AET before, or do you feel like you could have been guided better when filling out the applications on there? Uh, for sure. A lot of things have issues with AET. Like, for example, I live out in the sticks. Internet is not good. And when I'm going with internet, it kind of screws up anything that's anything to do with AEP because it's kind of when you don't have good internet AEP does not like you and so whenever you do that you have to usually rely on school internet and it's just not always the best situation okay yeah totally I understand that so basically what they're proposing is they would like for there to be a task force on the state level that could implement videos and some kind of written content to help these students such as you um, guide, get through AET a little easier. But when it comes to internet connection, that's a whole nother story. But if anyone has any other questions, you can go ahead and drop, drop them in the chat and we can answer them as best as possible.
clarify Emerson, everyone right now, you can be discussing your ideas on how to better improve SAEs in Louisiana and whether, uh, what are your thoughts on how we um, better use AET in Louisiana. That's the topic of conversation of the committee. Okay. Who will run the task force? The state officers on that plate. So Rachel asked the question, who will run the task force? The state officers have a lot on their plate. It wouldn't be so towards the state officers. It would be more towards, in my idea, from what I'm seeing on the information that they've put out, they would like it for it to be on a state level. So possibly state staff, not state officers, because I'm just as confused about AET as most of you. So I'd probably not be the best one to be on that committee. In mind too, that this committee can recommend who you think should run the task force. It's a part of the purpose of your committee. Yes, true. I thought within the last year or two, they updated AET and did put videos for instructional purposes. I think they did, Conchitula. I think they did. Um, have you seen some of those videos? Uh, yeah, I have. I used some of them, but to be completely honest, they were not that helpful. <laughs> like, they, they didn't clear up much. So, yeah. Um, that may be a problem. I feel like AET is extremely professional and it's extremely, the wording is very, I don't know, upper class almost. They use very high vocabulary when it comes to AET. So the biggest problem with AET is the cost involved. All right, so I think on committee report, the committee one research, um, if you go, well, actually I have it pulled up. The, on the committee one research, Someone asked, how much does AET cost? AET offers five subscription, subscription tiers based on unduplicated agricultural education enrollment for chapters. Yep, and Mr. Lejeune just dropped it right there. So, I mean, we can go over the numbers real quick if we don't, if we have time. You have time, Emerson, but the number of people currently in the meeting, we may not need to break out into small groups. I think it's okay to have those conversations right now. Okay, awesome. So, in the chat, or you can use a reaction and raise your hand. Na oh, National FFA has developed SAE for all that also incorporates AET. Yes, this is true. Florine, one, could you maybe talk a little bit about how they incorporate it? Do you know how they incorporate it? Just videos, okay, awesome. So, Lori one said the National FFA has developed SAE for all that also incorporates AEP. So she said they provide videos that could possibly, in my mind, they'd probably possibly help guide you throughout AET. So as we're leaving that topic of discussion, what are some ideas that we have as members to try and implement more SAE opportunities in Louisiana? You can answer this question by using a reaction and raising your hand or just simply dropping it in the chat. So I know something that some chapters had proposed or some people that I've gotten in contact with and I was asking, they said, well, what if we offered more workshops and what if we did more lesson plans on this? What if the teachers implemented it more, make broader areas for SAEs? Yes, we could do that too. I think SAEs are pretty, pretty broad. I mean, they go all the way from communications and sales to raising animal production and grain production. So I think it just depends also on where you are in Louisiana when it comes to SAEs and how in depth you read into those SAEs. Having more to having more deals, showing off. Can there be partnership SAEs? What do you mean by partnership SAEs? Mr. Lejeune, do you think you could elaborate on partnership SAEs? Yeah, let, let me hear from the Pontchartula delegate first. Tell me what you mean by partnership, and then I can talk a little bit about SAE for all to give you some more background. So what I mean for about partnership SAEs, I mean like, can more than one person be involved in one SAE? What? Let's say, for example, somebody has a dairy farm, like a kid, their family owns one, and they bring in one of their friends from school who lives, let's say, in the city, 
can they both do the same SAE was that during that time period? Yeah, they can do that. Um, and then, you know, with Ag Science Fair, Ag Science Fair has team events within Ag Science Fair and you can apply for an Agri Science Proficiency Award. Ms. Rashal, are you still on the call? Uh, yes, I am. Because Ms. Rashal, you participated in the SAE for All teacher training last summer, correct? Yes, sir, I did. Can you provide a little background on what y'all talked about there? I was going to do the same, but since you're on the call, you, you may know more about it than I do. Yeah, so with SAE for All, basically, it makes it so that every kid, no matter where they live, if they live in the country or an urban area, they have the opportunity to participate in the SAE. Now, those SAEs can be either provided by the student, their parents, the school, or even sometimes their school board or other community members. Um, it also allows students that it's kind of like, let's say that I'm just going to start doing this one task. The idea is that through this one task, I'm going to start building and gaining more knowledge of these skills that I need to be successful in a particular career or a particular SAE area. So like with your example with a dairy farm, like it's perfectly okay that your friend wants to come and, you know, check out your dairy farm. Maybe let them start feeding the, um, the calves or maybe let them do water or even start milking, you know, give them that one task and that can be their SAE. Yeah, they're not gonna win an award for it, but at least they're learning something about an agriculture industry, which is the whole idea about SAEs, is just to get kids interested in learning about different ag topics or even non-ag topics. Maybe let them start discovering fields that they may wanna be a nurse or they wanna be a doctor, and they can learn that through their SAEs by doing different things. Make sense? One of the key components of SAE for All is that it detaches the program from the FSA proficiency award structure. The idea is that for too long, students think that to have an SAE, they have to apply for a proficiency award. And that's not true. You should have an SAE because it's one of the three parts of the three circle model. Whether you apply for a proficiency award or not is not necessarily relevant to the idea of having an SAE. SAE for all envisions the idea that you can have an SAE that is not necessarily tied to a proficiency area. So they're giving states a lot of latitude to say that, you know what, if a student is going to be a babysitter, okay, maybe that's all that they can do where they are. It's not agricultural, and so it's not going to qualify for an FFA award, but we're still not going to tell the student, no, you shouldn't have a babysitting job because maybe you can't find something more agricultural in scope. So maybe that kind of helps you understand the purpose of SAE for All. It's to make sure that every student has the work-based experience project. And if it does not fit into an FFA award category, if the teacher's okay with it, that's still okay. It can qualify as their work-based experience. They're just not eligible for state degrees, proficiency awards, that sort of thing. All right, so Rachel said, why not have SAE day on within FFA week and have all the chapters have an SAE fair? Rachel, could you unmute yourself and go into a little more explanation when you say SAE fair or just explain your idea? Well, like with every other, like with the science fair, you have all these posters and um, like the little try, try this thing. You can do that for SAEs. I mean, it's the same concept. Okay, yeah, I just wasn't sure. My school doesn't have that type of thing. Yeah, we don't need to. I just thought it was kind of like, well. It's just for pressure. Yeah, so you can always, you could try and do that too. Um, SAEs are supposed to be heavily taught about in the classroom because they're part of the three-circle model. So this could definitely be something that you use to kind of push those kids that are thinking about SAEs to really dive deep into their SAEs. So yeah, that's a good idea. Um, is there anything else that, are there any more questions? Any more ideas on how we could implement SAEs more in the state of Louisiana? All right, awesome. So, 
mention on camera. Brooklyn, could you go into your question a little more in depth, please? Okay, so I'm from Simsboro and it's a really, really tiny school. There's not, we only have probably about maybe 40 kids that pay their dues every year and maybe not even half of them do anything. And um, like you were saying earlier, the um, AET offers the subscription tier stuff. So what would we do about more monetarily constrained chapters that might not think that it's worth it to pay the $175 for their kids because they just can't get enough people to kind of crowd into agriculture? Because there's, there's always gonna be people that are suffering for it, so to speak, if that makes sense. Okay, yeah. Uh, Mr. Lejeune or Ms. Rochelle, would y'all wanna go? into detail on that question maybe? I think part of that is what this committee was created to address. Can you come up with creative ideas um, of how statewide we want to see that done? Um, you can propose, you know, that the state try to find funding sources for it. I mean, there's, there's ways around this. Some states have statewide subscriptions. I do know that if every chapter in the state adopts it, AET gives you a discount on the amount. Now, they've never told me what that discount is, probably because they won't uh. tell I say, hey, 204 chapters are going to buy your, your AET. They would probably yeah. work out a specific deal with you. Some states get uh, state government funding to pay for it. Some states get funding through their Department of Education because they consider it to be an integral part of Ag Ed. So the, the, the purpose of, of this committee is to try to think outside the box. I think all of you agree that as a state, we can do better with SAEs. We need to do better yeah. with it. It should be an important part of Ag Ed. I like what you're talking about though. What are some of the, what are some of the reasons why chapters maybe are not adopting it? So y'all get real creative here and, and tell me, tell me what are you thinking? Your, your thoughts and ideas are going to help guide the executive committee to make a, a good decision on this. Yeah. So Brooklyn, if you could just drop your ideas in the chat um, so I can write them down so we can write a, a proposal for the committee. That'd be awesome. All right. What about like a co-op? Oh, sorry, what? I just thumbs up. Okay, awesome. What about a co-op with other chapters? Okay, Rachel, do you want to go in depth with your question? Or further explain the idea, Rachel? Just kind of like give us a solid <laughs> statement on what you think we could do. I mean, collaborate, like have chapters collaborate with each other that, um, do have SAEs in there, but they're small. And you have, you don't have very many to influence others. So why don't they just collaborate together? So you mean like the chapters come together? Yeah. Yes. And do what exactly? And um, voice their SAE experiences because the chapters are so small themselves and they don't have very many SAEs, SAE doers in their chapters. So why not just collaborate? Okay. Pay their dues together. Huh? I said maybe pay their dues together because they are so small. Okay. So Mr. Lejeune and Ms. Rochelle, do you can schools do that? Can schools come together and pay dues together? In my mind, they wouldn't be able to because if they came together, I thought SAEs had to be fill out, filled out per chapter. Proficiency awards are per student. I mean, dues, okay. whether, whether two chapters pay dues together or not, I mean, the amount is still going to be the same. It's either affiliation per school or it's individual membership per member. Um, it, it's not going to it's not going to make a difference. Now, Rachel, if you're talking about two chapters being combined into one, that, that's a completely different conversation. I mean, that, that would only have an impact if that school is paying affiliated membership dues, because that, that can change depending on the number of students. Um, and even for AET purposes, um, it, it's still tiered based on the number of students in the program. Okay, so Rachel, 
could you maybe come up with a statement on what you think? I know you kind of said something before, but now that Ms. Lejeune's kind of explained it, could you come up with a statement that I could write down? Well, I mean, I was personally just thinking about a more cost-effective way for more chapters to participate. Okay. And, and Rachel, in reality, I have no idea if, if I was to go to AET and say, hey, I've got five schools in a parish that want to all get AET, would that parish get a discount? I have no idea if that's something that they do. I don't know if they do that in counties outside of Louisiana. I have no idea. That, that could be a good question to ask, though. So the question to ask would be, can chapters collaborate when filling out proficiencies or can chapters collaborate when subscribing to AET? Yes. And, and for the delegate from Bazile, just so that I'm clear on this, is that kind of what you were referring to also when you said what about as an area? Kind of the same idea? Okay. I'm taking notes as we go for you. Yeah, I'm taking notes. Okay, Brooklyn, oh wait. Florian said, I think more chapters would utilize AET if the cost was reduced. Could we research a rate for all chapters in the state purchasing, as purchasing AET? So let me go look at those base prices. Or if you, Mrs. Lejeune had dropped a link earlier in the chat, you can go click on that. And on the right side of the screen, you should be able to see links to documents. And the document you need to look at is Delegate Committee 1 research. So I have it pulled up and it says, how much does AET cost? AET offers five subscription tiers based on unduplicated agriculture education enrollment for a chapter. So tier one, is 100 is one to 40 students or Mr. Lejeune is going to pull it up so y'all can see one to 40 students is 175 dollars 41 to 120 is 325 121 to 200 is 460 so on and so forth so I don't know I mean we can propose I don't think there would be a way to ask AET to lower the subscription I'm not quite sure If that's something that this committee wants us to do, I mean, we can always ask. I'm not, I will not sit here and say they're going to do that because I have no idea. I don't know if that's something they offer. Um, okay. But if, if the committee asks us to do that kind of research, of course, we'll do it. It doesn't hurt to ask. Okay, so lower the subscription fees. May be a bit controversial, but what parts of agricultural related budget could we possibly reroute to SAE developments? Okay, Brooklyn, can you, do you have ideas? I know you kind of commented this question a while back. I mean, like I said, it, it, it sounds weird and it sounds like I'm saying, oh, well, this part isn't essential when, if you really think about it, all agricultural budgeting is essential to us as ag kids because we need as many opportunities as possible. But like we've all said and agreed upon, we're weak in this area. So I was just wondering if maybe there's something, maybe there has to be something that we're maybe devoting a little much to that we could take away from and pull to SAE instead. What do you mean I don't like, know. I know that. Like budget? I know that. Yeah, like budget. Because I mean, I feel, I don't know. It's It's almost like we don't make it appealing enough for people to want to do it and there has to be like I don't know I feel like there's something more we could be doing okay that could be helped with more budget being devoted to that category okay. well I think you're you have the right mindset I just don't think in my mind I don't see it as a budget issue I see SAEs it starts in the chapter level and it, yeah. should, it should be implemented in Ag 1 within the three circle model. So oh, yeah. for us to really get places within our state, our chapters really need to be pushing for SAEs. Um, and then the state can really elaborate on that and push it further. Okay. But I mean, Ms. Rochelle, I saw you unmuted yourself. 
do you think you could probably answer her question about the budget thing? Well, I was going to ask whose budget is she talking about? Is she talking about individual chapters budgets or is she talking about the state's budget? Statewide. Okay. Um, well, one thing is that, like Emerson said, is that it has to start at the chapter. Advisors yeah. have to make this seem appealing. Advisors have to be the ones, hey, you need to do this and you need to do that. Um, and honestly, I'm just going to talk about myself here for a second, but a lot of advisors in our state don't know about SAE for All. And last summer when we offered workshops about it, they didn't they didn't come to it and didn't even want to understand what was going on. The few that did thought it was a great idea. Um, okay. But it's just a lack of knowledge at this point. And so I think with this task force is that we need to educate, educate, educate. And that yeah. way we implement these great things that National FFA is offering and get us to the point where we are submitting our best proficiency awards and we're getting, you know, national recognition. Right. Just so, to give you a little background, when you talk about state funding, um, there, money that we spend on FFA programs in the state, we don't get state government support for those. All of our FFA programs are paid for through membership dues, fees for events, uh, chapter fees that are assessed directly to chapters, and then money that's raised through the foundation. That's how we pay for FFA events. When you're talking about um, school supplies and things that run your ag department, that is state funded dollars. Your, your school district gets X number of dollars per student, um, depending on what courses they're offering to pay for those things. But each individual school district has pretty wide latitude as to how they're going to spend that money. So for example, um, when I was teaching at Springfield, I was allowed, so, so every ag student in the state, every ag teacher gets $50 per ag student. And then last year that was increased they got an additional 25 on top of that um mm -hmm. my high school allowed me to use that money to pay for aet because they said it's a consumable supply that your students need for the ag program so i was allowed to do it that way some school districts don't allow that some school okay. districts allow that money to be spent on um ffa affiliation dues so that 100 percent of their students are ffa members when i was in livingston paris they said absolutely not you can't do that some schools allow teachers to charge a class fee that pays for it. Some schools say, absolutely not, you can't charge a class fee. So it really depends on the school district um, when you're talking about how that money is going to be used. Currently, we don't have any line item appropriation that the legislature has passed to specifically fund AET. That's not something that currently exists. But would it be wrong to mandate it across all parishes statewide? Like, would that be... Like, would it be wrong to mandate that you can spend your money on the AET program because it is a consumable? When, when you say mandate, who would be doing the mandating? Ooh. Because from, our, from the state FFA office, we can't mandate anything. That, that's outside of FFA. I can mandate that, you know, you have to go to state convention. We can mandate that you must pay yeah. FFA dues if you have an FFA chapter, but once you get outside of the FFA part of Ag Ed, our office can't mandate anything because we're not the legislature, I'm not the governor, we don't work for Department of Ed. So if you're talking yeah. about requiring a school district to spend money on something, you're talking about putting something into law or putting something into Department of Education policy. Okay. Which could be a recommendation from this committee, but it's definitely not something that that as an executive board we can just implement in the fall. If that meant, and yeah, just said, boom, right. And you as an FFA delegate, y'all can't vote to do that either because that's beyond the scope of what we're allowed to do. Okay. So, Miss Rochelle, you mentioned how y'all offered a workshop for advisors, and no no one really like took interest in it um there were a few teachers who did um but most teachers i think have this hesitation because they have poor sae development and so because of that they you know they're like oh well, i'm just gonna keep doing what i'm doing if that makes sense like they don't want to do more work because that's what they think it's going to be when it's actually going to be less work because especially with the first tier 
it's all about the student doing these interest surveys. What are they interested in? How can, you know, what skills do they feel like they need? It's all about the student learning about themselves. And so it's less work on the ag teacher actually, but a lot of them didn't see it that way. Or a lot of them were like, oh, well, you can come talk to me about this later, or you can do this later. Um, I think we should probably offer some of this for the kids. Um, you know, just doing like the first few steps of like doing the interest survey, having them um, do the career finder from National FFA and things like that, just to get kids, you know, in the mindset of, hey, you know, let me start thinking about my future career now, no matter what grade I'm in, and really building upon that so that the teachers, the foundation's already set for the teachers, and now the teachers are just building on what they've already been doing, if that makes sense. That's actually exactly what I was going to bring up to you. Like, what if we started reaching more so the members or the students? Because I know for me that my teachers are those teachers that don't want to have to learn the new things. They want to stick to what they know and just keep it easy when in reality what you're explaining it would be easier if they would learn what's coming up and what's new. So I think that'd be a great idea. I wrote that down. Off Offer workshops for interested members, interest survey and career finder at National FFA. That's definitely something we could push. Possibly, I know we're over Zoom, we could possibly do like a survey and see who would be interested, like you said, the interest survey. See who would be interested in possibly attending like an, a Zoom workshop and just maybe you or some other advisors who have been through this SAE for all training or workshop, possibly post that and provide some information for some of these students. Yeah, and also with the e-learning um, that we've been doing, I feel like it's going to be a lot easier for teachers to collaborate with each other. So even if it's just me or Mr. Adams, you know, maybe sharing how we introduce SAEs, maybe that would help other teachers be able to like, you know, implement that into their classroom as well. Kind of making this super easy for them. Yes, exactly. Um, the committee should recommend that Louisiana FFA approaches AET for reduced pricing if the entire state participates. Also, providing SAE for all training for members at camp, advisors at both camp and ag teacher conference, and in addition, provide training on the national SAE grants. Okay. Can you say that one, can everyone mute their cameras, mute everything? It was a little static on my end. Can you please repeat that and go a little slower so I can write that down? The committee should recommend that the Louisiana FFA approach AET for reduced pricing if the entire state participates. Also providing SAE for all training for members at camp advisors at both camp and ag teacher conference and in addition provide training on national SAE grants. Okay awesome. So let me go into the chat and see. The Ponchatula asked would there be any way to create a grant for schools that can't afford subscriptions? So just like Florine had just mentioned, there are grants on the national level for SAEs, and I'm pretty sure chapters could probably implement them through, for these SAEs or for these proficiency areas, or to use the money that they get from these grants, if they receive these grants, to pay for, SA, for AET. So is that kind of what you're asking? I think, but National FFA does offer grants for SAE areas. My chapter has, okay, awesome. My chapter has two essay, has two people who do SAEs. What if we went to the school board? Rachel, can you elaborate more on that? The school board does not allow us funding to, they want to dictate what we do with the ag money. And they're more football led, so it needs to go more towards the football. So therefore we still don't give as much money anyway but we can't spend it the way we need to. So I know that that's a problem that
schools go to the school board? Can everyone still hear me? I think we're having a Zoom issue right now. Okay. Did anyone else have a big freeze just now? Because Emerson said hers also locked up. Looks like we lost Rachel. I don't know what just happened. All right, I think we're getting back on. Emerson, can you hear us again? Yeah, everything was cutting in and out. Mine completely locked up for about a minute or two. Okay, so it was kind of... I don't know, proposal though. I asked Emerson to get out and try to come back in. We'll see if it fixes the issue. Let's see if she can get back on. Is my audio still uh, cutting in and out or is it clear now? We'll give Emerson a second to come back in. Um, what we'll do is we'll have to get a committee report started. So I'll show y'all an example of one here in a minute, and then y'all can start putting your formulation together once you feel like you've gotten to a point where um, you're comfortable with what you want to recommend. But we still have plenty of time. So if you have more ideas, keep them coming. Y'all have come up with some really good ideas this morning. Brooklyn, do you want to go? Oh, there we go. Emerson, you're back. Can't hear you, Emerson. Brooklyn, until we get Emerson back on, do you want to keep the conversation going for us? Can you take over? Brooklyn is the vice okay. chair of our committee. That's why we have a vice chair. That way when the president's or cuts out. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, Brooklyn. Okay. So does anybody does anybody have anything else? The chat's kind of a little stagnant right now. Does anybody have anything? Anything at all? Don't be shy. Brooklyn, it looks like the delegate from Ponchatoula was talking about partnerships. 
Hold on. One moment. One moment. Let me go to the chat. We can encourage partnerships between local businesses and chapters. Okay. Okay. That's not a bad one at all. Okay. Um, so when you when you say when you say businesses, do you mean agriculture related businesses like certain restaurants and stuff like that or maybe like tractor supply um or do you just mean businesses in a general sense and not necessarily agriculture related well being like okay so for example Pashtola is a very agriculture related town okay we have yeah. we have a lot of farms and businesses that are ag related and they often do offer internships like we have a okay. lot of uh beekeepers in Pashtola Okay. And one of them is one of our alumni, and she offers, like, two internship spots every year if they want beekeeping SAEs. Okay. Okay. Can you can you think of any other, like, you say Ponchatoula is a very um, agriculture-related town. Um, do you, have you ever heard of any, like, partnerships with, like, people growing crops and giving them to restaurants yeah a few of our restaurants okay. do that like they actually get them from the local uh farmers that are in town like at outskirts town in the parish okay and they can also um so like i know a lot of feed stores for if they're selling like livestock like chicks or ducks or anything like that okay oftentimes they'll they they buy from just about anywhere as long as you have like credible sources of how you raise the chickens, whatever else. But you could always start up your own business type deal by incubating chicks and selling them to a local uh, store. Okay. I'm also it's curious because, because I've never, man. I'm also curious because I don't really see this in like where I, like the region I'm in. Do you guys, are you guys particularly keen on like farmers markets in any capacity? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we have we have them in Hammond, Ponchatoula, New okay. Orleans. Like we have them all over, really. Okay. Have you um ever known anybody to like sell their crops and stuff for funding for FFA related purposes? Yeah, our chapter used to have a, a booth at the farmers market. Oh, okay. That's interesting. Our That's cool. Our supply did like a thing where we um where they collected like, do you want to donate to your local chapter? okay okay donations yeah that works too that works like businesses asking if they want to donate to certain chapters that works but yeah i think it's a really especially how you brought up farmers markets i think that would be a really cool thing to do for encouraging schools to participate in that because not only can it provide an essay opportunity for students okay but it also it can it can also make a fundraising opportunity for said chapter to be able to pay for the AEP subscriptions. Okay. Um, oh, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. Um, I was going to say that that, like, all these, like, this. <laughs> um, extremely. Um, it's like extremely community based. This is very much a community effort. So how would you um, possibly propose that you get the word out that stuff like this is going on? Like how, how would you, how would you propose we do that? That I would, that's something I'd have to think about because uh -huh. okay. I know for, I know a lot of chapters, they use like Facebook, Instagram, yeah. social media platforms to get information about their stuff out some use mm -hmm. podcasts it just kind of depends yeah okay so you talk you talk about social media a lot um social media is more kind of geared toward like the younger generations obviously like us and maybe like early like early mid 20s stuff like that how would you maybe propose um, getting the word out to the older people that think it should all be done one way? How newspaper. would you propose that? Maybe, maybe a, news, a newspaper ad? Yeah, okay. That definitely works. 
Um, we can put an ad on the radio. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, hmm, I'm trying to think of something else. What if we had, I know this, this kind of, this is kind of like a, sounds like a far-fetched kind of idea, but what if we had an FFA farmer's market? Like, we could divide it into areas, and okay, one time a year or so, every area has a farmer's market that's just FFA, like, chapters. Mm-hmm. And it could ra- it could be a way for raising AET funds or giving their students an opportunity. Okay. Okay. So like um the the you say the FFA area related state mar uh state market thing. What about um the people that don't really like they don't do like anything agricultural, like they don't milk cows, they don't grow crops, what would what would their role be? What what would you say? They could be like let's say a student doesn't have anything to do with growing the crops or doing anything with the actual production of it. They could be the ones getting in contact with the radio station or the newspapers and they could be okay. they could they could do it for ad communications. Or yeah, play they, play mediator. Or they could be the students who are actually at the booth selling and they could do uh ad business. Yeah, okay. Okay. That that works. You you, because I mean it's it's you kind of want to be sure you're including everybody here. Because if you because this is collectively a statewide effort, if that makes sense. Back to the task. Okay, so Sinjal Lafouche says, back to task force, do we know how, how much resources we would have to devote to said task force along with someone making all of the new video written and lesson content? Um, Mr. Lejern, could you maybe enlighten on that possibly? Would you have maybe any idea? I mean, we have the resources that our office staff are able to pull together along with the work that the state officers do. So just as a little background, there are three adults that work full time in the state office. It's myself, Dr. Smith and Miss Eton. And then we currently have five undergraduate students who during the school year, once LSU comes back, they can work a maximum of 20 hours a week. Um, so as far as creating video written and lesson content, um, I mean, we, we do that now with, with other things. I mean, all of you have seen the stuff that we've put out on our website, the things that we put out on social media. Um, when you're talking about putting together lesson plans specific to AET, Ms. Rashal can uh, probably chime in on this one, but usually we, we get help from ag teachers when it comes to curriculum writing. A lot of times, if it's something that becomes an initiative, um, teachers will come together to form curriculum committees to put that together. The most recent example is the Agritech curriculum that just got rolled out last week. Um, that was a collaborative effort amongst teachers and, and university faculty. Um, so, you know, it, it just really depends on what you recommend and what the executive board wants us to do with it. Some of this material already exists. We, we already have access to, to resources on the AET website through National FFA, so we're not completely creating everything from scratch. Um, but we do have the ability to create content. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Lejern. When uh, Central Lafouche, when you say um, someone making new video, written, and lesson content, um, which which do you think that this new task force should aspire to make the most of? Should do you think it should all be like an even mix between everything, or do you think they should concentrate more in one area to get? Um, their ideas across to more people and so more people can understand and connect with it? Um, well, personally, I believe majority of students learn best in the classroom. That's how okay. I see it. 
So maybe they could come up with more, a little, just, just a little bit more of lesson plans. And then the teachers, the actual ag teachers could teach those and explain to the students the importance of AET and SAEs and how they work together to advance everyone as a whole. Okay, okay. Uh, I admire that point of view. Thank you. Does anybody else have any ideas, any opinion that they want to put out? Are there any more? Well, hold on. Ooh, here we go. Are y'all planning on having any kind of student representatives in the task force? Huh. Poncho that's Tula. what that's what you guys are here for. You guys are the ones who are going to recommend who do you who you want to be a part of this task force. So, you, you know, this is a student -led organization and the power is in this committee's hand to say, this is what I want to see happen. So if you feel like members need to be a part of this conversation, then y'all definitely can make that recommendation as well. Okay. Are there any more questions? Brooklyn, before we move on, um, I see we have Lauren, Abigail, and Lauren Gilbo joined in. If you could tell me, tell me which chapters you're from so I can record you. Hold on, Rachel sent something. Oops. Rachel, do you mean recommending past state officers to run on the task force? I'm assuming that's where your mind's going. She may be having connection issues again. Whoops. She says yes. Oh, there we go. Okay. Abigail Thomas, what is VPHS? I don't know what that. They're, they're telling me which school they're from. Oh, okay. Okay. I was confused. Ladies from Ville Platte, remember that your school gets one vote on this committee and then you'll get one vote on the next one. So when we do a vote, make sure only one of you are, are voting so our numbers are correct. Okay. Whoops. So Brooklyn, if no one else has anything they want to contribute, what I'll do for you is let me pull up an example of what a committee report looks like and then you can lead them through the process of starting to formulate this report. Okay. So let me, let me pull this up on the screen for you. This is an example from National FFA from last year. Can everyone see it? Brooklyn, is it up on the screen? It's, it's here for me. Okay. So last year there was a national committee called the Production Agriculture Opportunities Committee. What we would like for you to do is come up with three big recommendations and then you can add okay. details to each one. Now, if you want to do more than three, you can. I would try to not go more than four because it starts getting big and long. Um, but you can, you can determine that as we go. So more or less what I would like for you is the, the general idea of this committee was to develop a task force to improve SAE and AET opportunities in Louisiana. That's our big goal for this committee. Based on the conversations we've had this morning, are you able to identify three, at most four, big topics that we want to recommend to the board? So you can see on this one for the Production Ag Committee, they recommended promotion, balance, and internships as their, their three big recommendations, and they gave some details below each one. So Brooklyn or Emerson, if Emerson wants to jump back in now, if you want to lead the committee through a conversation, what would be our three or four big topics that we want to cover 
uh, for the executive board. Emerson just sent me her notes. Give me a second. Sure. Okay. Give me a moment. Okay. So, okay. There may be some di uh, difference of opinion here, but um, what would you guys, as, as a group, what would you guys say that you think is most important for this committee report? Because you've all, you've all had really, really great ideas and we've, we've kept good conversation going. So what would you guys say is like most important? Like the three most important things to all of you as a general. Brooklyn, can you see this Google form? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. These were the notes that I've had from your conversation. If anything's missing, let me know and we'll add it back in. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. So, yeah. What would you guys say is most important to put in this committee report? Okay, partnership. I think the partnership with local businesses, that one should definitely be in there somewhere. Ponchatoula delegate. Um, And, and there's a few things that you could include under partnership. I've heard you talk a lot about um, parishes going in together, possibly areas going in. You're talking about partnering with businesses. I think all of those things could lump under the concept of partnership. Okay. And, and then you could explain that topic. Student involvement and interest. Where are you going with this Ponchatoula delegate? Are you going like on the giving the training to the students and the teachers simultaneously so that they can learn about like the new way of doing things in a more digitized age? Yeah, I'm thinking more of a uh, essay for all type uh, thinking. Like okay. the way it was mentioned earlier with the training for everybody for essay for all. Okay. Um. Do you think we could lump a couple of things together with this, Mr. Lejeune? Because we have another like training and workshop suggestion, I think. Yeah, tell tell me how you wanna how you wanna go about doing it. I said let's try to condense it to three or four. Okay. Um who? I can start trying to move some of these around. So I think this one Yeah. Tell me, tell me if you agree with where I'm moving things. If not, let me know and we'll fix them. So I think that would be partnership. Okay. Yeah, that works. I think this one would be student involvement and interest. Not this. One. Yes. This one about lowering fees go under partnerships. Grants. That's probably a separate one. That yeah, that could be. Training would go here. Reduce pricing, that's also under partnerships. And these are all training. So it looks like you've got several under partnership, several under student interest, and then you've got um, ways that are kind of hanging out that need to go somewhere. Tell me what you think about that. I think that looks good. I think that's all um, as best condensed down as we can get it. Um, so should we just make a separate tab for like, yeah, okay. 
Um, scroll down to the grant and more monetarily related things. Um, could we put this in like a question type format for AET and let them answer some stuff for us because there's a lot that we don't really know. As a um, suggestion, do you want to have a, a third uh, item on funding? You've got yeah. partnership, student involvement. You're going to talk about money, but there's no recommendation on funding. Um, yeah, we can put a funding recommendation in. I think that would be the most logical way Are to the, go how, about it. How do the delegates feel about that? Thumbs up, thumbs Delegates, do we do a, should they do the raise hand fe feature so I can see where everybody stands or no? Sure, yeah. Okay, so how, where is that again? I forget where it is. Somebody help me out because I don't get it on my screen. Yeah, it's the raise hand thing isn't, I know that uh, Caleb Lemoyne said, but it's for some reason not really showing up for me. Are you on a computer? No, I'm on my iPhone. Well, it, I don't Reaction. think it's on my iPhone because I got it. I'm on my phone and it's not there either. Reactions. You said you're looking for a raise hand? Whoops. Whoops. Okay. So, um, the raise hand seven? is under participants. So if you click yeah, on okay. participants, okay. you'll be able to see it. Yeah, I'm there. Okay. It was just hiding. Um, yeah, all in favor of putting a recommendation for funding into the committee report, please show a raise of hand. I'm gonna give it a few more minutes, let everybody find it. Hmm. That's probably it, Brooklyn, because some of them are not voting delegates. So I think that's this is. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. One, two, three, four. It's a majority five. of the ones here for sure. Majority. Okay. Majority carries recommendation of funding will go into the committee report. Let me uh, let me clean this up a little bit. Yes, sir. I do think the delegate from Central Lafouche brought up earlier specific to a task force. The, the committee recommendation was to create a task force. Um, so I think it would be a good idea for you to recommend who should be on the task force. At least give the executive board your idea of who you would want to include. Okay. We can put that as a, a separate piece of text. Um. Ponchatoula delegate says something that uh, under the funding tab, we can include information to the chapters on national grants that are available already. Okay. So, um, like Lejern said, we do need to recommend people for this task force. Who would you guys give priority to putting on this um, this new force? Who would you guys give priority to? Could you technically put your undergraduate staff into it, Lejern, or no? Because I know you were saying you had people at your disposal already that already did content for you. They could, but I think when we're talking about a task force, I don't know that the task force itself is necessarily 
um, going to be the ones creating the content. I think the task force is probably going to be responsible for giving direction as to what needs to be done, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, we could put undergraduates on it, but I don't know that they're necessarily, um, okay. I don't know their experts okay. in, the, in the content. If, if okay. Anyway. Um, Rachel made a recommendation for previous state officers. I think I've seen that come up a couple of other times. Would we be able to, oh, oh, Ponchatoula has a good one. Maybe an officer from each area team so that there's still current membership involvement. So when you say current Ponchatoula delegate, we rotate out every year. We're not in service for, you know, we don't have a multiple near year tenure. We change out every year. So would you, would you say that, um, um, part of the task force change yearly to reflect the new um, area teams ideals and yeah that was totally because it, every year you'd get a new student who has a new perspective on things and every year there are new issues that come up and they be okay. directly involved in them okay so you, um, you could focus it on a certain station like maybe reporters since they're in charge of outreach and social media you could do that officer is in charge of being on this task force okay uh emerson gave me a um she sent me something that i was just about to get to past proficiency award winners and competitors that would make sense since you guys have said that you've had problems with the aet program and you just think it's really annoying and doesn't really help with anything would that be something that you guys are willing to include in this? Yeah, they have experience using the site. Yeah. Okay. Seems like a pretty obvious way to go. Um, who else, you guys? Would you could you maybe think of anything? Maybe past uh, area advisors, possibly past area advisors, because they've probably had like kids that experience those problems too, and maybe have some experience with the site themselves. I don't know if you need past area advisors, but you definitely will need ag teachers on the committee. Okay representing each area. Okay. Okay. And you don't have to specify who they are. You could ask LATA to appoint one act okay. to each area, however you want to do that. Okay. Um. Any any other recommendations for possible people? Do we do we know how do we know how large of a scope we want on this task force, uh, Mr. Lejeune, as far as manpower goes? Do we have any um, indication on that? Again, this is probably going to be kind of like an advisory board that's going to okay. come with direction and ideas of improving SAE and AET, and then they'll. Okay. Get instruction to the state FFA office to LATA to implement those ideas. So you, you want to have enough representation so that we have representation statewide so that students and teachers are represented, but I wouldn't go too large with it. I mean, right now, if you do one past state officer, a member and from, one from each area, an ag teacher from each area there, you're at nine. And then if you do past proficiency winners, I don't know how many you'd want to do. I mean, you're, you're already over 10 at least. Okay. I, I probably, and Ms. Rachel, you might chime in. I probably would not recommend to go more than say 15 on this. Okay. So when you guys talk about like proficiency award people, would you maybe want to get somebody who won a proficiency from a certain part of the state, like from different like someone who won a proficiency from this region and this region 
in this region. So we all kind of have like an idea of what is available for other kids in that region when they look to this task force for help with their SAEs. And for those that don't have any kind of experience at all. Star Farmer winners, okay. And if you're wanting, uh, Ponch Tool, that's a good idea. I was actually thinking the same thing. If you want to catch a variety of members, which you probably want to do is find a winner in an entrepreneurship category, a placement category, an agri-science category, because that will cover, Okay. Uh, that covers the different types of SAEs. You do it that way. And it covers the different types of um, award applications too. Rachel brought up an SAE generator, and I did ask this question a while back, way before we even got to here, but I think it's already, um, Rachel, if you pull up the uh, delegate committee number one research, I think that's actually the last question, and it says that uh, the technology already exists and is available for teachers and students, and there's a link available. So you can go click on that if you want to and kind of poke around and see what that's about. I think that was the, the, the answer y'all were looking for on that question. It's called Ag Explorer. It's been around for a while and it helps students identify which SAE they would like. It's actually pretty in depth, pretty interesting. Okay. Um, so we have the idea to do one officer from each area, J just one past state officer. Is that, is that what the general consensus is? Just one past one? And if so, do you guys possibly have anyone in mind that you'd like to recommend or do, or do we need to go by a more appoint this person type basis like Lejeune mentioned earlier? I would keep it more broad this way. That way the board has a little more latitude to find someone because you may recommend okay. them and they're not available. Yeah, and yeah. In general, if you know you want a past state officer, just leave it that way. We can find whoever's the available to do it. Delegates, we're at the point where we need to start wrapping up. Report, so go ahead and chime in um, so that we can finish these up. Okay, so have you, okay, state officer, one current, past proficiency, one ag teacher. So we go by a strictly appointed basis for everybody. Um, should we go by that? Okay, hold on. Um, all in favor of doing a strictly appointed basis for persons on task force, please uh, show in favor by raise of hand. Is this majority or do we, okay. okay. I think this is majority. I don't. Yeah. Okay. So y'all answer this first question and I see uh, Chris from Central Lafouche is bringing up Ag Teachers. Chris, what do you think about this past state officer first? Just one? Maybe so. Does everyone else Ooh. agree be one past state officer? All right, and who would appoint the past state officer? Oh. Would you want the executive board to appoint the past state officer? Would you want the current state officer team to appoint the past state officer? We can make that recommendation. I personally, this is just my opinion, executive, I think the executive should. I think it would just be all around like a smoother process. So 
So my only concern with the whole appointing is that, okay. like Mr. Leger said earlier, that person may not be available. So we might need to keep, like, in mind multiple people. Oh, yeah. That would be um, fitting. Yeah. And we've obviously got plenty of, like, past state officers and stuff like that that we could potentially use if they don't have any um, previous engagement prior to their appointing. Right. Because since this, since this, this team is, like, it's, a, it's an important team, since it's so, yeah. it's, uh, it encompasses such a large thing in our, in our FFA, we need to have people on that can, like, dedicate the time to it and the commitment to it. Yeah, and, and exactly. So you, and so you know also the executive committee is made up of the state officer team and two advisors from each area. It's made up of the area advisor and the LATA vice president. So you have representation from the students and from the teachers whenever they do these appointments. Okay. Okay. That's, that's, that's good. Okay. Any other possible concerns? Possible um, suggestions, concerns? Brooklyn, let's keep going. All right. For, for the area officer, y'all still want to do one current officer from each area team to be replaced each year for as long as the task force is in effect? Yes, no? Um, let me do a let me do a show by hand vote. Hold on. All in favor of rotating out um, current state officers yearly, as long as task force is in effect, please show by raise of hand. And should the area officer team themselves appoint their officer? Ooh. Majority will carry for the um, for the yearly rotation. Do you guys think that that might be a bit of a conflict of interest to have the area people appoint their own area officer to serve? Like, think about like nominating committee. They pick people that are from like, not from places where people are running for like area or state office so that there's no conflict of interest and favorable opinion overly favorable opinion do you think do you guys think that that would maybe cause issues down the road do you think we need a safeguard uh i think so you know how even in this delegate meeting they have the chair and they have the vice chair yeah i think there should always be a backup but i i do think the area team should nominate their own person seeing as they know their own time schedules they know their own interests and what they would be best okay. suited for okay so when you propose this backup, who would you propose for that? We could always use, uh, we could always choose a backup from just another one of the area officers. Like they could do, this is the primary officer on, on the task force. And let's say they can't, they can't do the task force, then it goes to this next officer. So you're saying that the, so, so you're saying that the backup should be a kind of a, just keep it moving system where if somebody can't do it. Right. So that way at all times, there's still representation from that area. I'm talking though, I'm talking from, are you talking like backup as far as like a point, like the people that appoint or the person being appointed? Because my understanding was that you talked from a point of, we need a backup appointing system should a conflict of um, interest arise. Oh, I was talking about appointees. Okay, okay. My apologies. My apologies. You're good. This is what okay. we have. Is this the language that you want? One currently serving officer from each area officer team to be appointed by the area officer team and to be replaced each year with a currently serving officer for as long as the task force is in effect. It's a little wordy. I think that's good. I think... Um... Okay, I think that's I think that's fine. Does everybody does everybody else agree that that's wording that they're cool with, or would you prefer to add or maybe take away? All right. 
What about the past proficiency winners? Ooh. How many? How many? How many start dropping chat suggestions? And then I'll pick, I'll I'll pick from. It, it will be more difficult to do this per area just because we're not balanced between areas as far as which ones typically do proficiency awards. So my recommendation yes, sir. would be to do it by award category to make sure you're covering all the award categories. So should we do like Lejeune mentioned earlier and do one from each? Can, can we all agree that that's, that that's a fair way to go about it? You guys can do a, um, Raise of hand, vote if you favor. Miss Rashal, did I leave any of those categories out? It's still entrepreneurship, placement, agri-science, as far as the, the FFA awards go. Yes, sir, for my knowledge, that's all I know. I know that SAE for all is a little different with service learning and school-based enterprise. Um, those are not really developed at this point. I don't know, Ms. Rashal, do you think it would be important to include those two newer ideas of SAE also? Um, personally, I think it would just because we're not just talking about proficiency. We're talking about AET and like SAEs in general. So maybe if we have like some people who are doing those things, they could offer insight because I know at like the school-based enterprise, there are certain things that you can and cannot, you know, do. Right. Let me type this up and y'all can tell me what you think. And I can't spell this morning. Okay. Five past proficiency award winners, one from each of the following categories, entrepreneurship, ownership, placement, research, school-based enterprise, and service learning. Is that all of them, Ms. Rachel? Yes, sir. That's all of them. I see the question about the junior categories. The, the junior categories are the same as the senior categories. There's no difference in them. They're just young members. Now, if you want to, if you want to include a middle school student on it, uh, we're, we're currently having conversations about how to have better participation in middle school efficiency awards and SAEs. So I don't think it'd be a bad idea to include at least a middle schooler also. Okay. Ponchatoula suggests involving one of the junior VPs. Yeah, typically area four is the only area that consistently has a junior VP. The other three areas, area two, I don't think ever has one. Area one is rare. Area three, every now and then they'll get one from LaSasse Jr. But if you involve one of those with what we currently have on the list, that would put you at 15. And that might be a pretty good number. Okay, so, okay. So do you think it would enhance um, representation and participation across the board? Do you guys like as a, as a group of people think that that would assist? Abby, do a vote, Brooklyn. Do we want to include? Oh, I see they're voting. Okay. Covers a lot of bases. Okay, so. I do have show of hands going pretty much majority for that. I'm assuming we can all agree that this is something that we want to include because it will essentially cover all of our bases. How do y'all want to appoint that junior VP? Let's say that we have two of them in a year. Or we could just say 
all junior vice presidents. I mean, it's going to be one or two. It's not really going to make a difference. You want to just include all of them? We can write it this way. Write it like that. Yeah, I think I think that would be pretty good because you say that you know area three occasionally will get one, area four usually gets one, and then areas one and two are just kind of not. So with what you have here, this is fifteen people. It could be sixteen people. Potentially. Most. Yeah. And I probably would not recommend you go any bigger than that. Okay. Okay. Anything else from anybody? Anything at all? I'm going to give it a minute. Mr. Lejarn. Yes, ma'am. Would we ask the questions directly to AET about like the payment and funding? I've got the founder of AET, Dr. Hanegriff. I have his cell number, so I can ask him anything you want. <laughs> okay, fantastic. So if y'all are cool with the makeup, let's finalize your points now. So do we still agree that these are the three points you want the task force to cover? These are the three things you want the task force to look into. All right, uh, I'm gonna have them do a show of hands vote again. How about Brooklyn, let's do one at a time. Let's do partnerships first. Okay, okay, that, that works. All in favor of partnerships being on the task force agenda Show you're in favor by raise of hand vote. Nobody's switching sides. We've had a whole bunch of these. My next question will be for these items under partnerships. Is there anything that you want to add or clarify? I'm going to clean them up so that they're legitimate questions. So they, they, they look right grammatically correct, but is there anything you'd want to alter, anything you'd want to alter in this list? Anything at all? Clarify co-op between chapters. Rachel, what's your, what's your meaning by co-op with other chapters that Two or more chapters could come together to help pay for AET and get a discount offered to them if they partner. Is that what you're saying? Should it go under funding? I don't know if Rachel is still on anymore. Um, let me see. Rachel's, Rachel's in the chat from a little while ago. Let me see. Uh, Rachel's still yeah. here. Yeah, Rachel's here. I'm checking. 
Okay. Oh, man. Is this a better way of wording that line? Hmm. So this summarizes those. So in a way it implies partnership because you're getting more than one chapter to work together to try to get a lower rate. So do you wanna leave it under partnership or do you wanna move it to funding? Leave it, she said leave it. Oh my gosh. Is there anything else y'all want to do under partnership? Maybe we can include encourage partnership between individual members. To establish. How? like that yeah that looks good it's just like more of the fact that if you establish individual partnership then it can open up a wider a wider range of opportunities okay. all right anything else under partnerships any other changes If not Brooklyn, let's move on to the next one. We've got right under 30 minutes left for this committee. So yes. finalize it and vote. Yes, sir. All right. All in favor for student involvement interest in implementing SAE for all to be on the task force agenda, please show you're in favor by raise of hand vote. Majority. I clean up some of the wording. Tell me if. Are there any other. Officer training, workshops for students, teachers. Are you good with those two bullets? Officer training and workshops for students and teachers to learn more about SAE for all and AET at state convention and leadership camp and the labor parts. Provide trainers and teachers on how to apply for national SAE grants. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's probably the most condensed. Um, oh, looks good. Are there any other changes you guys would want to make to the second point? 
any change at all. All right, Brooklyn, let's look at the last one. All right. All in favor of funding being on the task force agenda, please show you're in favor by raise of hand vote. Majority carries. This one's gonna need a little tweaking Brooklyn to clarify. We've got this one from Rachel about SAE day during FFA week. Um, do y'all want to move that one to the second point? It's not really funding related. Yes, I say move. Delegates, do y'all want to move this one to the second point? Yes, Delegate Ponchatula. Leave it under funding. How's that? Create an SAE day during National FFA. We encourage tractors to host SAE fairs. That looks good. Formal. How do y'all want to handle this one? I don't want to, I don't want to change that on my own here. The whole point about requiring AET. Hmm. That will probably be the stickiest, most contentious one on here, just from experience. So how do y'all want to approach it? Let me, let me hear your thoughts. Well, I know for a fact that, like, I know our school, for at least our freshmen are required to have their SAEs freshman year. And so we all, we always, um, I think our dues that we pay in the classroom go into it. So I'm not exactly sure how we would require schools to pay for it. Seeing as that's like, that's one of those things that you talked about earlier kind of a controversial topic. Hmm. Do you want to be a little more diplomatic with it and say something instead of requiring schools to pay for it that we explore other avenues of funding for all chapters? Is that- I feel like that- I feel like that would be less, you know, just kind of in your face. I feel like requiring schools to do it would almost sound like threatening to an extent. Yeah. Because remember what I told you earlier, for us to require that, we have to have a funding source for that. I can't, I can't go to Northwebster High School and um, um, tell Ms. Bro, you must pay for AET. I, I can't do that. There's no law that says she has to do that, and there's no funding source to compel her to do that right now. We could, um, we could instead of using require, we could encourage schools to pay for it. How we do we, um, how do we make AET appealing for chapters across the state? Possibly. 
That sounds good. It sounds better than require. Yeah, for sure. Does that go under funding though, or does that go under the second bullet? Mm. Mm. I think you've already covered that in this first point. When you say make it more appealing, I think that's part of these trainings. Yeah, okay. I guess the question specific to funding, do you want to ask the task force to find funding for statewide use? Doesn't mean they will find it, you're just asking them to look into it. Yeah, it could be more like, I guess more like the, the mission sort of the task force. Something like that. I think that looks good. Is there anything else you want to include or do you feel that we've left out? Brooklyn, if you want, let me um, let me pull up. Hold on, let me stop sharing this one for a second. Let me pull up the rationale for this committee again. Let's look over it quickly, make sure that we've covered the purpose. Yes, sir. I have it up as well. I have it too, I have it right here, so everybody can see it. Okay, so again, it was proposed by Vinton. The proposal was that the state develop a task force to review, suggest actions to be taken to improve and develop new video, written content, conferences, lesson plans for implementing and using SAEs and AET to allow for students to be engaged with the SAE portion of the three circle model. Do you feel like the committee report that you've created addresses that request? I do, but did they? Should we? Okay, they're replying. Okay. So here's what we need, Brooklyn, to make this official. Yes, we need yes, a sir. delegate. We need a delegate to move that we ex that the committee accept this report as written. Yes, sir. They can debate it for a few minutes if if there's any debate, and then we need a final vote on the committee report, and we'll we'll need to do it as a counting vote. Um, so anyway, go go ahead. Let me. I'm going to take this down, and I'll put the committee report. Up. All right, okay. so you'll, need, um, you'll need someone to move that the committee accept the report as read or as written, then it can be open for debate and then we need a vote. Yes, sir. And you'll need a delegate to turn the microphone on and actually move it. Okay. I move that this, uh... I move that this report, that the committee accept this report as read. Is there any, any debate at all? Ponchatoula delegate, what's your name? Remind me. Michaela, sir. Kayla Mixon, right? Yes, sir. Y'all need a second, Brooklyn. Uh
Is there a second? I'll second it. Now, if there's no debate, now we vote. I guess. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So do you have to do the um, number? No, we're recording. Or can I access that? Somewhere? Well, well, what we're doing, we're, since we're recording it and it's a small number, we can see the screen. It, it, just do this, just have them raise their hands. Anyone who's in favor um, can just go ahead and raise their hands and we'll get a count. Okay. All in favor that the committee report accepted as read, raise your hand to show you're in favor. Go ahead and put the hand up and make sure it stays there. We'll get a count of it. It looks like it's unanimous, so that'll make this easier. Yeah, so it'll be unanimous of all the delegates who were here today. All right, Brooklyn, that's all we needed. Guys and girls, y'all did a really good job. I think that this is a well-written report. I think you addressed the topic that was put before you. Um, what'll happen, this report will come up next Tuesday at our statewide meeting. So make sure your two delegates attend that meeting next Tuesday at nine o'clock. It'll be at the same link. Um, the report's gonna be presented to the delegate body and it'll get final approval there. If it's approved, it goes on to the executive board uh, we're going to meet sometime in the fall, and then you'll see the result of this over the next couple of years. You'll see the the, uh, the task force be put into place if it's all approved. So make sure you all participate on Tuesday. All of you, since you participated in this first committee, you have one delegate from your chapters also assigned to the next committee at 10 o'clock. So make sure your second delegate comes on at 10, um, and we'll get started with that committee. So that's all I've got, Brooklyn. You can go ahead and adjourn them if they don't have any other business. Yes, sir. I have a question. You had a question, Rachel? Yes, sir. Um, about the uh, second delegate. Uh huh. I found out not too long ago that um, she was a senior and she had already graduated. That's okay. And, um, That's okay. She's, she's still a, she's still a member. Yes, but she's not responding. Let me see. Mackenzie Sykes. Yeah, y'all aren't assigned until the um, the third and fourth committee after lunch. Well, yeah, after lunch. So just get with me before then and we'll figure out what y'all want to do. Okay. All right. Okay. If there are no more questions, is there a motion to adjourn? I will motion that. Is there a second? I second the motion. There has been a motion and a second. The meeting will now be adjourned. All right, thank you. If you're finished with the meeting, you can log out. Bye, guys. Good job, Brooklyn and Emerson. <laughs> Mr. Lejeune, can you hear me now? Yep. Of course, of course, of course. <laughs> That's OK. Um, My, mine spazzes out, too, sometimes. I don't know if Rachel got accurate. Do you need minutes of the meeting? Hold on. <laughs>